In this tip of the day, I'd like to demonstrate best practice when performing multi-axis machining. In this example, we have a part that's been held to an indexer using a little fixture here. Let's turn the indexer and fixture layers off so we can just focus on the part. Best practice is to always create your construction planes first. You can easily do that by heading down to the lower left hand corner, selecting your construction plane tools, and the easiest tool to use is the third option from the left. Once you select that, you can simply left click on a face and that will create the construction plane. Now you do need to save it, so let's click save. I'm going to give it a simple name like side one. Very good, so we'll click OK to that. Let's do the same thing for the next side. We're going to use the same option, left click the face, click save, and we're going to call this one side two. Very good, so we'll click OK to that. Notice how both construction planes have been saved. Now you can easily select which construction plane you'd like to start machining on. How about side one? Let's left click that. Let's head over to the command manager, go into our stock tool paths, and let's perform a profile operation. I'm going to select the geometry. That looks good. If we take a look at the tool parameters, I'm quite happy with the turret position, the speeds and feeds, so we'll just click next on that. Our depth of cut looks great, clearance values look good, we'll click next. All this looks very good, so we'll go ahead and just click finish and let one CNC generate the toolpath. Now when it comes time to machine the second side, simply select side two. Now we can go into, let's say, a pocket operation. Let's select the pocket, right hand mouse click, and again, I'm happy with the parameters for the tool here. I'm going to say all this looks good. We'll click next on that. Depth of cut looks great. High speed closed. We're going to use ramp zigzag. We'll click next on that. All these parameters look great, so let's just click finish and let one CNC generate the toolpath. Now if I need to perform machining back on side one, I can simply select side one. Now you may have noticed that one CNC creates a construction plane for each machining operation that you perform. These are simply reference construction planes, just showing you the association between the toolpath and the construction plane that was used. You can actually ignore these reference construction planes and just focus on the original construction planes that you created. In fact, if you'd like, you can delete the reference construction planes by highlighting and simply selecting the delete button. All right, that's it for this tip of the day. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And don't forget to click the subscribe button.